this time to celebrate the life of David Calton. It is our hope that everything that is done will bring comfort and strength to the family. And again, we want to encourage them during this difficult season. Let us bow now for a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, we come thanking you for this day even with the current circumstances, dear God, and we come with some with heavy hearts. For we ask that you would continue to manifest your presence in our lives. We pray that your spirit might be in this place, that everything that is said and done would bring glory to your name. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for the life of Brother David Calton, that he lived before us. We thank you now we pray that we might just get a glimpse of your glory as we move beyond what we see to the things that you told us to hope for. Thank you now for this family, the friends who have come to share, and those who may be listening in various mediums. We give you praise, we give you honor, in the precious name of your son Jesus, amen.
this time, we're going to have the Old Testament and New Testament readings by Deidre Kelton, Emmerman, and Ryan. Thank y'all for coming uh, this morning. We appreciate it. Take the time out of your day to uh, have a good time to talk. Uh, we read now the New Testament, Second uh, Timothy four seven. Says I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Thanks to Deidre and Brian. That takes, takes a lot of strength. To continue with the poem that Deidre read in the way of comfort to the family, I hope we all believe and know in our hearts that David has moved to a better place. It is not to make light of the absence, the void, or perhaps even the loneliness. But you must know that while you may be shedding tears, he is rejoicing in his new home. I am honored today to be, to have been asked to have farewell words to my friend. I met David back in, 19, in the 1980s. Beginning in 1989, I had the privilege of serving with him and his family at First Baptist Church of Lucas. David was a member of our adult couple Sunday school class. I was the teacher. We all know David as soft-spoken, kind, and considerate of all. I had the pleasure of knowing him as my air-conditioned specialist. <laughs> 
as many of you, David was always available and took care of whatever was needed. And I want you to know I have yet to receive my first bill. One of the things that characterized David's life, it was a life that we have life that does not mend. We prayed, many prayed very hard that his health would be restored, that he would move back from where he was and have an opportunity to go back home. But based on the providence of God, God's compassion and mercy, he said, I am your refuge and strength. And he decided to exercise his mercy and said, that's enough. My good soldier, I want to take you home. David's life was one that did not bend. As many of you know, he was very soft-spoken, but he did have certain convictions. And he stood, stood by those. And then one of the things that really characterized David's life is that he knew that in spite of what we see even today, he had a life that would not end. He believed that that was an eternity. We all live with the hope of heaven. Because of what was done on Calvary's cross, the one thing that would prevent all of us from getting to heaven, and that is our very sinful nature and action. We had a Savior who took care of that for us and prepared a way so that we all would have the opportunity to get where he is today. Again, I welcome you to join me in celebrating the life of Brother David Calton and share with his family. Now this time we're going to have acknowledgments by, by uh, Deidre. Following that, Melanie will come and read the obituary. David Mitchell Calton, 72 years old, passed away on July 20th, 2020 at the Belmont in Allen, Texas. In complication, must always celebrate work on July 25th, 2019. He was born on Thursday, October 30th, 1947, to Everett M. and Amy May Calton at his boyhood home in Branch, Texas. He was a member of the First Baptist 
Baptist Church of Lucas for over 40 years, but he currently attended Stonebrook Community Church in Frisco, Texas. He married Suzanne Christian Kelson on November 7, 1964 in Lucas, Texas, and they lived their entire life, married life in Lucas. David worked in commercial residential heating and air conditioning for over 56 years. He had a passion for his work and truly enjoyed his profession. He suffered a traumatic brain injury and was never able to work again, nor return to his earthly home after the accident. He was an avid hunter and enjoyed his trips to South Texas for deer and turkey hunts with his buddies. He also enjoyed restoring an antique automobile, a favorite of his, his 1957 Chevrolet. And he and Suzanne also enjoyed international travel the most memorable trip, memorable trip being the safari in Africa. David loved his family and the big dinners. They enjoyed celebrating family and holiday events. David's wit and dry sense of humor made him a pleasure to be around. He will certainly leave behind a great emptiness and void for all of those who knew and loved him. He is survived by his wife of 55 years, Suzanne, one son, Ryan H. Kelson of Bell, Texas, one daughter and son-in-law, Deidre and Jeff Amelin of Roy City, two cherished grandchildren, Travis Christian Kelson and Bria Lee Kelson of Lusing, and one great-granddaughter, Louis Cage Kelson of Allen, three sisters, Betty Lanham of Princeton, twin sisters, Vicki and Mickey, one brother, Billy R. Kelson of Greenville, five nephews, Jack Lanham, Ginger of Salina, Dean Lanham, and Jill of College Station, Jerry Lanham and Sherry of Collinsville, Texas, Bill Kelson of Campbell, Michael Kelson of Greenville, two nieces, Lucy Barron and Larry Marcus of Vienna, Virginia, and Melanie Dean Thames and Lois of Lucas. Sister-in-law and brother-in-law, Sarah Kay Barron of Corsicana and Johnny, and a sister-in-law, um, and many other, sorry, sorry, and many other loving relatives and friends. He was preceded by, in death by his parents and longtime friends and hunting buddies, Robert R. Greer and James R. Smith. Thank you.
train started and early in the Oregon, we had Mr. John Deal. I'm grateful for your participation and sharing your talents with us on this day. There is a short message I would like to leave with the family and friends who gather. And it's taken from Psalms 34, verse 19. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. And just because they kind of expect you when you uh, have a message or whatever that you have a subject for it, I'm going to title this God's Deliverance. Again, we thank all of you for sharing with us on this special day of tribute to Brother David Townsend. If you believe as I do, then you know that the real special day was this past Tuesday. Today, our Savior decided that he had suffered enough. And for those who know and have accepted him as Lord and Savior, we really believe that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Someone once said, some people come into our lives and quickly go. Some stay for a while and leave footprints on our heart. And we are never the same. When I think of my friend David, he was one of those people. Outside of his work, the most important things to him was his family, his friends, and his faith. It has already been highlighted, the relationship with his family. His wife, Suzanne, for over 55 years, his son Brian, his daughter Deidre, the siblings Betty, Mickey, Vicky, and Billy, and all of the grandchildren and all of the other uh, friends. David was always available and willing to lend a helping hand. I can recall many of his hunting trips that he talked about with his friends, but I think even that had to take a back seat when Suzanne got him hooked on his international travel <laughs> and talking about his exotic trips, especially the, uh, the safaris, as uh, was mentioned. On friendship, to have a friend, a good friend, is one of the highest delights of life. To be a good friend is a noble, yet can be a difficult undertaking. As I stand before you today, I am thankful that David was my friend. I can recall the last time I was allowed to visit him in the rehab facility in Richardson. I walked in as he just lay there staring. I called his name, talked to him a few minutes, then I placed my hand on his hand and we had prayer together. As I left the room, and began to walk away, the nurse called me. She said, uh, I think he's trying to say something. She said, he must have recognized you because he was a bit kind of restless, but he's trying to call out something. We both, the nurse and I, returned to the room, and just as I was there, he was quiet again. And I said, we love you, my friend, and walked away. As much as I cherish David and his family, as my friends. The thing I am most grateful for is the fact that I know David knew a friend we call Jesus. So what about his faith? In his final days, especially in this pandemic environment, this had to be the most difficult time for David and for his family. As he lay there desiring and begging to go home, knowing that they love him, wanting to spend time with him in spite of the conditions, but not being allowed to visit. It was always our prayer that the Lord 
in his gracious mercy would just dispatch his angels, give him company, give him comfort and courage to make it through just another day. And as we look at the passage of scripture mentioned, Psalms 34 and 19, the righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers them from them all. David had his troubles. I can only imagine the grief, the loneliness, the brokenness he must have felt from time to time. But through it all, he would say, as I say to you today, taste and see that the Lord is still good. In spite of how things look, as a believer, there are things we know, we know. God is the God of comfort. He is He only, He not only comforts us in our trials, God comforts us in all our troubles. I think David knew that in whatever he was going through, God would be faithful. He could run his race knowing what God had done before and believing that God will be faithful and do it again. As the scripture, 2 Timothy 4 and 7, that uh, Brian read, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my race. I have kept the faith. For this reason, he could say the same thing. God comforts us for a reason, though. And that reason is that he would turn our hearts, not only on our own issues, but that we would use those life experiences to be a blessing in the lives of others. Today is a special day, but we have only a few more hours and it will be over. So how do we go forward? Where do we go from here? David lived his life in a manner that assured his future destination. He did not have to worry about a day like today. And as you visit the cemetery, on every tombstone there is a little dash that is placed between the birth date and the date of death. This little dash represents time. If that dash could speak, it would tell us to spend our time on things that really matter. If that dash could speak, it would tell us that there is more than just the daily activities that we are involved in. So the important thing on your tombstone is not your name. It's not the date that you were born or the date that you died. But it is your personal investment of what you've done in the lives of others. Though David is not present with us today, the dash speaks loud and clear. It tells the story of the life that he lived. And he would tell us today, become a productive member of society. Have a great work ethic. Demonstrate the significance of family. David showed us what it looks like to be a good husband and a good father. He showed us what it looks like to be a good friend. With every opportunity you have, we should do something to help others. When providing that help, don't use the world's standard. It may be helping people that don't necessarily talk like you. They may not necessarily live like you. They may not necessarily look like you. But again, that's the life we are called to live. Here is someone that believes that there is a high power that rules both heaven and earth. Here lies someone who believes in the fact that God who sent his son into the world to die that we might live. Someone that believed that God created everything that exists on this earth. David believed that Jesus Christ died on a wooden cross, that he was placed in Joseph's new tomb. David believed that Jesus himself was buried, but that wasn't the end of the story. He believed that on that third day morning, he rose from the dead and ascended to heaven, where he sits at the right hand of the Father. I can imagine the time he is having right now, not only in fellowship with his earthly parents, but also with his father-in-law, Wallace Christian, Lucille, Charlotte, 
and Gloria, the one affectionately known as Scooter Brown. <laughs> what would he say to us today? He would say, life is precious. Cherish it as much as you can. Life is uncertain, but death is sure. While you are here, make it count for some eternal significance. He would tell us that in this life there are going to be good days and bad days. There are some days you'll be up and other days you'll be down. He would tell us, as the psalmist David said, the righteous person may have many troubles, but God will deliver them from them all. That deliverance can only come through Jesus Christ. He was not perfect, but he was made perfect through his faith in our Lord and Savior. So the question is, will you see him again? That's the question that only you can answer. I can tell you where he is, and I can give you his new address, but he is with his heavenly father. And I don't want to burst your bubble, but I am told from the scriptures that none but the righteous shall see God. Because I believe as David believed, I know I will see my friend again. If you have not secured your relationship with God, and know without a doubt that you will see him again, then you can fix that on today. Just say, Lord, I confess my sins to you, and I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died for my sins. Come into my life, and I want you to lift me and make me a part of your kingdom. My final thoughts to the Calton family and friends. One of uh, the people radio personality, Dr. Laura. My wife is not very fond of her, but every now and then she'll say something that seems to make sense. She said, the only way I know how to make life meaningful is to make sure that my existence makes someone else's life better. David did that. And I can say without a doubt that he had a meaningful life though shorter than any one of us would like to see. But I pray that we all might pattern our lives in a similar manner. And then my final thoughts. Always pray to have eyes that see the best, a heart that forgives the worst, a mind that forgets the bad, and a soul that never loses faith. I want to say to the Calton family and friends, we love you. I thank you for involving us in having a chance to express that to you in terms of ministering to this family in such difficult circumstances. But again, I pray that God would continue to bless and keep each one of you as you go forward with the memories that you've made over the years, that those memories do not die. And again, we pray that it might be something that would just continue to challenge you to be all that our God has created you to be. May God bless and keep you. As we close out, I want you, we are gonna have the final viewing and the Terry Time Jackson staff will be in charge. Before we do that, I want you to go on and give the benediction at this time. Other than the family, would the others uh, just stand just briefly? Now to may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest, rule, and abide with each of us until we would meet again. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen. 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 Turret Time Jackson is in charge. You may be seated.